Battlefield 5 Standard Edition releases tomorrow, November 20th, so everyone will finally have access to the game. Before you hop in, you'll just want to make sure you go in, fix the settings, so that way you can get the most out of your Battlefield experience. So today, we're going to go over the best settings I found for the PlayStation 4. First thing we're going to go over is the controls. So if you go into the control options, there's only a couple things that I'd recommend changing here. Uh, the first one is your soldier aim sensitivity. This value is going to differ for everybody since it is personal preference. I prefer to have a little bit on the faster side. Some people prefer super fast. Some people prefer prefer a little bit slower. The default setting I want to say is like 20 which is super low so I would recommend increasing it a little bit. I personally use 65% and then for the zoom aim sensitivity I use 110%. Again this is personal preference so you will be changing these settings here and there to tell you get it perfect for you um, but I would recommend starting at a higher setting than what the default is. Next we're going to go into your soldier buttons. Again this is for the PlayStation 4. If you're on the Xbox this portion doesn't really apply to you but you're going to want to change it to custom and once you have it set to custom hit triangle this is going to bring up basically a key bind screen if you've ever played on pc where you can change the keys to anything you want on your controller so what i recommend doing is scroll all the way down until you get to toggle toolbox once you get to toggle toolbox you're going to want to flip toggle toolbox and use bandage to the opposite side so you want toggle toolbox to be your up arrow on your d-pad and use bandage to be your bottom arrow on your d-pad now the reason for this is on the PlayStation 4, the stick is below the D-pad. So if your heel is pressing up on the D-pad, you're gonna have to move your thumb farther away from your stick and therefore slow down your reaction time than if you moved it to the bottom, which would allow you to move your thumb shorter distance. So it just makes sense to have it set to the bottom. Now, if you look at the picture of a Xbox controller, the Xbox controller, the stick is above the D-pad, so it makes sense to have it on the up key. Or if you're using one of the custom controllers that looks like an Xbox controller, just leave it for the up key. Basically, you just wanna change it so that your um, thumb doesn't have to go as far in order to heal. Next, we'll move over to the advanced settings. On the advanced settings, you'll see the top one is stick aiming acceleration. This is for all of you who were either fans of Battlefield 4 and hated Battlefield 1, or fans of Battlefield 1 and hated Battlefield 4. If you like Battlefield 4, set stick aiming acceleration down to zero. If you like Battlefield 1, you want to set it to 100. If you're like me and are just kind of in between, I just leave it at the default 50, but just make sure you change that if you prefer one game over the other. And then finally, we get to controller tuning, which is the last option or last section in the controls. And if you scroll down, you're going to go to your controller left stick and the axle dead zone. You're going to want to change that dead zone down to a much lower number than what they currently have it set at. I believe default is 20%. I have changed it so I don't remember, but it's pretty high. Uh, so what the dead zone is, is the amount that you'll need to move the stick in order to get a response. The higher it is, the more you're going to have to move your stick in order to get the action to take place. Now, if you're kind of a jittery person, you'll want to set it a little bit higher. Personally, I have the dead zone set on both sticks down to 2%. And the reason being, again, is that if I'm moving the sticks, I want the action to happen quickly and I want it to be smooth. So lower that dead zone down. 2% I found is actually perfect for me. Uh, you may need a little bit higher than that, but 20% or whatever they have it set at default, maybe it's 15, is ridiculously high. And now that we got the control set, let's move on over to the gameplay options, which is the next menu over. On this one, there's only a couple things I've changed. Uh, I've changed the crosshair color to a pink color. The reason I've changed it to a pink is because it's very clear where it is at all times. Uh, in most games I use yellow, but uh, Aris has a yellow field, so it is kind of hard to see the yellow crosshairs on that map. Pink, there's nothing pink in Battlefield. So if you put pink on there or a brighter color, it makes it much easier to see. I would avoid things like green, red, or blue, being that those are usually used to mark teammates or enemies and it can be a little confusing. But if you use things like a yellow, pink, or purple, it'll be easier to see your crosshairs at all times so you know where you're looking and know where you're about to be shooting. Um, then on the logs and everything, on the PlayStation and Xbox, there's no type out chat. So everything that has to do with kill logs or with chat messages or anything like that on my HUD, I've turned off. I want my HUD to be as minimal as possible, but still give me all the information I need. I don't need it to pop up that I killed somebody because it's going to do that whenever I kill them. It's going to show me a skull. So 
so I know I got the kill. I don't care if my teammates around me get a kill. It doesn't affect me at all. So I turn the kill log off. Uh, I'd recommend doing that. And I've left pretty much everything else on. Um, that's pretty much all I changed on this settings, on this menu. When we go into audio, audio, I just turn music off. Reason being is I stream. If you stream and there's music, it gets tagged right away for copyright infringement. So I turn my music off. If you like music, cool. If you like to be able to hear footsteps, clearly turn it off all the way. Uh, and then finally we go into video. And now for video, I use a brightness of 74. I think the default brightness of 50 is a little too dark. I like to be able to see in dark corners and not get uh, shot without seeing someone sitting there so a higher brightness setting allows me to do that and then when we go into field of view I have mine currently set to 90 so field of view is the amount that you can see on your screen it, it basically either zooms you in or takes you out as you can see here this is at 50 so this is the lowest setting of field of view that you can get this one is at 90 and then finally the max uh, I think is like 106 so you kind of want to play with this as well get the field of view that works best for you or your screen if you're playing on a smaller screen you'll probably want a lower number field of view if you're playing on a larger screen you can go up higher um, it just allows you to see more on a peripheral I didn't change the vehicle field of view at all I don't really use vehicles a whole lot I am a uh, infantry player mostly I only use vehicles if I'm traveling from one point to the next the ADS field of view uh, I would turn off if it's on I don't remember what it's on on default but the ADS field of view is your aim down sights field of view. If you have it turned on, it won't zoom in when you aim down sights. If I'm aiming down sights, I generally want it to zoom in a little bit so that that way farther targets are clear and it's easier to hit your shots. So I leave that off and motion blur, turn that all the way off. I hate motion blur. It's not something I like in my games, so I turn it off. Everything else left the same. And that is basically it. It's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. A lot of the controls, a lot of the options are going to be uh, what you find useful for you. So don't feel like you have to match my settings uh, in particular or like to the T. If you want to change something or if you like something a certain way, by all means, set it the way you like it. And if you find something that works for you and someone else is struggling, let them know what worked for you so that that way they can possibly incorporate that into their game, making it easier for them to do well in the game as well. I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. If you've made it this far, make sure to hit that like and subscribe. And in the comments down below, uh, let me know what settings you use. That way I can take a look and see if maybe I can adjust my settings to perfect them a little bit more. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see you in game.